Hi! Hello once again, everybody. Welcome to part two of episode 1095 for your blessed, thankful Thursday, your first Thursday of the month, Thursday, September the 7th, 2023. In this one, we're going to be learning about Acts of Kindness, another passage about kindness. We talked about kindness two, three times this, since I started on the first in the last seven days. I've talked about kindness three, maybe four times, including this one. So, but from Allison Kedia Kaeda, K I E D A. And the Allison is L A L Y S O N. Let's see if you can see that on the screen. Right? Right there above my finger. There. Pause it and look it up and see how how you how it's supposed to be pronounced. I'm not sure. It's Kaeda, Kedia. Keda, Keda, however it's pronounced. If I, if I butcher it, I'm sorry. I'm just saying it in some of the different ways it could be said. So, But if you're excited about this one, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications. Share the video and channel with your family and friends. Help me get some more. Help, help me get all the subscribers I can get. Birthdays, anniversaries, and prayer requests in the comment section below for today. And how was your morning? How did your morning go? And I didn't ask this in the morning video, in the first video, but how was your hump day Wednesday yesterday? And what are you looking, how, how has your day been so far today? So, but, but acts of kindness. Allison writes, months after suffering a miscarriage, Val Valerie decided to have a garage sale. Gerald, Gerald, G-E-R-A-L-D, a neighbor craftsman a few miles away, eagerly brought the baby crib she was selling, bought. While there, his wife talked with Valerie and learned about her loss. Hang on just a second, I got another coffin spell coming on, so hang on just a second. I'll be right back in a quick flash. Sorry about that. Quick flash. Whew. Got that coffin one coming on. I felt it coming when I was recording the morning, the first video. It actually started to come up and I had to stop it. When, as soon as I started reading, it hit me. And I, and I felt that one coming, so... Sorry about that. You probably know know how I feel. Okay. After hearing of her situation on the way home, Gerald decided to use the crib to craft a keepsake for Valerie. A week later, he tearfully presented her with a beautiful bench. There are good people out there, and here's proof, Valerie said. So like Valerie... Ruth and Naomi suffered great loss. Naomi's husband and two sons had died. And now she and her bereaved daughter-in-law, Ruth, had no heirs and no one to provide for them. Ruth won one through five. That's where Boaz stepped in. When Ruth went in the field to pick up leftover grain, Boaz, the owner, asked her about her. When he learned who she was, he was kind to kind to her. Ruth 2, 5 through 9. Amazed, Ruth asked, Why have I found such favor in your eyes? Verse 10. He replied, I've been told about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. Verse 11, Boaz later married Ruth and provided for Naomi, chapter 4. Through their marriage, a forefather of David and of Jesus was born, as God used Gerald and Boaz to help transform the grief of another. 
He can work through us to show kindness and empathy to others in pain. I know not yesterday, but the day before, um, a somewhat associate on a Facebook group that we have from NASCAR and Kevin Harvick, one of, one of the group members lost her husband. And then just before that, a friend from my church, a lady from my church, suddenly lost her husband. So that's two two husbands within a couple of days. So, but it's a just a sudden sudden shock about the one from my church. I saw I saw him on Sunday. He was fine and dandy. And by Tuesday, he gone. He had a uh, some. Um, he had an aneurysm, an aortic aneurysm spot in in the heart that burst. And he had problems with that once before, and they got it fixed. But something happened to it, and it burst, and they couldn't they couldn't get it fixed in time, and they couldn't revive him. So. It was like he was just in perfect, like he was in perfect health when I saw him on Sunday. I shook his hand. We said, we we gave our our, our good good vibes, and we went on. We I left church. Never never knew that it was going to last time I was going to see him. Well, for for now, but it said he would he had gotten his. Salvation in tow a few years ago, so we know he's in heaven. And I and I and I feel sorry for his wife. She's a very good, a very good friend to me. I'm all, I'm always every time I see her see her, I go up and give her because she she's an older older woman. She's like a mother, motherly type friend. She get, she's given me advice times before about certain things. So it's a, I always, I always go up there and put my arm around her and say hello and how you doing, like. So I feel bad for her. So you just have to, you just have to pray for her and pray for this person from the faith the, the group Facebook group losing husbands like that it's like sudden just a sudden loss like <laughs> but so when have you been the giver or recipient of an act of kindness and what was the result? If you feel like it, answering those questions, put Q1 or Q2. Basically, it's Q1 part one. Or first question is just question, and then in part two. So basically, you would have to answer both. If you're going to put a qu answer, you answer both of them at about the same time. You just put your first your first part answer, and then then like put like a comma. Or a semicolon, and then say, then tell you what the result from that act of kindness. But make sure you put that in the comment section. Doesn't have to be necessarily your question or your answer. Somebody else can help you come up with something if possible. But ponder, ponder that by saying, Dear God, thank you for sending your son to redeem me. The greatest kindness of all. Your Bible reading today, we're starting in the book of Proverbs, chapters 1 and 2, and then uh, finishing up 1 Corinthians, chapter 16. So, start one book in the other book, <laughs> in the other. 
But like I said, uh, like I've said before in a previous video, Proverbs is a good book to read every month. And it's 31 chapters. Now on months with 30 days, you read one chapter, whatever the date, the day of the month is, that's what chapter you read. And if it's a 30-day month, on the 30th, read 30 and 31, the last two chapters together. And then on a 31-day mo month, read, read one chapter a day, whichever, whatever day that. And then in, in um, February, if you're reading it, you read one chapter a month. Um, I say if it's a 28-day year, you, you read 28, and in that 28th day, you read 28, you read the last four. And then if it's a if it's a leap year, you read up to 29, and then on the 29th day, you read the three the, the remaining chapters. So if you're going to read it the next month, you can start off with chapter one for day one of the month. So, but that, but that's a good read. I've done, I've done, I did, did it one year. I, I started off in January reading Proverbs, um, Psalms and Proverbs. I came up with a, with a schedule and every month, like January, I read it one chapter a day because it was 31 days. And then in that whole year, I read Proverbs 12 times. I don't don't remember how many times I did Psalms, but I in that whole year that I started, I read the book of Proverbs all 12 months. And then, like I said, I don't remember whether it was a 28 or a 29 day February so I read up to that last day and then I finished up the, the book, reading the whole, the rest of what the book was all about. And then the next March the 1st, I started on Proverbs chapter one. I went right back and read it again. So, but, but it's, it's, it's a good one to read. So whatever the day of the month is, that's what chapter you read. So like this day being September 7th, if you start off the first of the month, you would read Proverbs chapter 7. You get it? <laughs> then tomorrow you read chapter 8, and then you go chapter 9 each. And then with it being a 30-day month, on the 30th, you read chapter 30 and 31, if you're going to start off back at the beginning, October the 1st, you would read Proverbs chapter 1. It's like it, you like you just, like, rewind. You finished it. Now rewind. Start again. But it, that's pretty good. It turned out a pretty good read for 12 months in a row, all straight. And then I read Proverbs, I mean, Psalms. I probably read it three, four times during the year, the way I had it set up. The way I had set it up. Because each, each day of the month, started off in January, and each day of the month I would read just so many chapters of Psalms then I'd go over and read my Proverbs. And then the next day I'd read some more Psalms and then read the next chapter of Proverbs. Next day, so on, so on. And I think I did it probably about three, four times. I read Psalms during the year. So, plus I was reading, um, I don't know whether it was uh, it wasn't this. I think I had a um, another schedule that I was following. I think we had one at church. 
they had given us one at church. Like we, like the morning, we would read one in the morning and then one in the evening. So I would read that one, and then in the evening I would read the set the. the it was like it's like it is set up here, in in this book, where it's part of the new the old, the old testament and part of the new testament. That's what this was. Plus, I read a little bit of the. I had scheduled Psalms, so many chapters, so many Psalms, and then turn around and read Proverbs. But I was doing that. I would read the morning, the morning passage. Then I would do my Psalms and Proverbs. And then later in the day, I'd come back and or later in the I like guess later that night or evening, I would read the evening passage. But I, that was the way I was doing for that whole year. But then it kind of got got a, it got, got kind of old, so I didn't start. I've done it since. But, but I, I read more doing these. I read passages more and more, especially when I'm doing the turning point. I read a recommended reading out of there. So I'm reading verses in here in these passages all through it. So, so sorry for rambling for about five minutes, but, so, but I'm going to get off of that coming up tomorrow in part two of episode 1096 engine closer to that episode 1100. We're going to be talking about for your beautiful fast Friday, September, the, the, your next Beautiful Fast Friday, because, like I said, we started last Friday, which was the first, and then we're brought back. We've gone seven days. Now, it's just going to say, and now instead of saying first, it's going to be another, or the next, or whatever, whatever I put. But for your beautiful Fast Friday, September the 8th, 2023, episode 1092. Six Part 2, we're going to be learning about the God of Surprises from Amy Butcher Pie, derived from Matthew 4, 18 through 22. So. so God bless everyone. God bless America in 2023. And I'll see you later. <laughs> keep on keeping on and trusting God. And he'll keep you safe in all you say and do in 2023 and beyond. And until and until later, peace out, everybody. So long, farewell. Come back later after seven, and we'll be learning about having all we need. Episode uh, five sixty five of the Turning Point series for your beautiful, your blessed, thankful Thursday, September the seventh. Having all we need. 1 Timothy 6.6 6 is our beginning passage, but we'll be reading it in the recommended reading, 1 Timothy 6.6-10. 6, and our turning point is from Charles Swindoll, and the Bible reading is Ezekiel 41-43. through 43. So stay tuned to that. I'll get to that in just a few minutes, but you'll see that later after 7. So, in, so until then, me and Baby Yoda, we out until then, so have a great rest of your um. Blessed, thankful Thursday afternoon, and we'll see you later after 7. So until then, goodbye.